Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am Nishat Kumar with the news at 9. The headlines. India is aspiring for a 5 trillion dollar economy backed by reforms says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Over 71% polling in the fifth and final phase of Jharkhand Assembly elections. Assam government to hold dialogue with organizations protesting on citizenship issue. Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal says rights of indigenous Assamis would not be heard by the CAA. Death penalty awarded to four convicts in Jaipur blast that had killed 80 people. Onao rape convict Kuldeep Singh Sanger condemned to jail for whole life also to pay 25 lakh rupees fine and in weightlifting Sai Khom Mirabai Chanu lifts the gold in women's 49 kg category at Qatar International Cup Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the center has brought number of reforms to lay a strong foundation to make India a 5 trillion dollar economy addressing the annual conference of industry body ASEAN in New Delhi today Prime Minister said in the last 5 years the country has strengthened itself so much that such goals can be set and achieved he said entire country has to come together and fulfill the duties to achieve the target Bharat ki arthavyavastha tay niyamon se chale tay lakshyon ki taraf badhe इसके लिए हमने व्यवस्था में आधारभूत परिवर्तन किए हैं चौतरफा फैसले लिए हैं उद्योग जगत की दशकों पुरानी मांगों को पूरा करने पर ध्यान दिया है और इसलिए आज 5 ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकोनॉमी के लिए एक मजबूत आधार बना है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड 5 इयर्स अगो द इंडियन इकोनॉमी वाज रनिंग टुवर्ड्स डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड हिज गवर्नमेंट हैज चेंज दैट एंड ब्रॉट डिसिप्लिन एंड पॉजिटिविटी He added government is not afraid of any challenges prime minister said india now has a government which listens to farmers laborers and corporate world he said due to the steps taken by the india government now 13 banks have returned to profit chhe bank pca se bhi bahar nikal chuke hain humne banko ka ekikaran bhi tez kiya hai bank ab apna desh vyapi network badha rahe hain और अपनी ग्लोबल पहुंच कायम करने की ओर अग्रसर हैं। हमारी सरकार ने बैंकों के कारोबारी फैसलों में किसी तरह की दखलंदाजी को समाप्त कर दिया है प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड गवर्नमेंट वांट्स टू फॉर्मलाइज एंड मॉडर्नाइज द इकोनॉमी कंग्रेचुलेटिंग द इंडस्ट्री बॉडी मिस्टर मोदी सेड द थीम दैट एस चैम हैव सेट फॉर द सेंटेनरी सेलिब्रेशन इज एसोसिएटेड विद द गोल्स एंड ड्रीम्स ऑफ द कंट्री एंड कंट्रीमैन The fifth and the final phase of Jharkhand Assembly elections passed off peacefully in 16 constituencies spread over six districts of Saheb Ganj, Pakur, Dumka, Jamtara, Devgar and Goda districts of Santhal Pargana region. The counting of votes will take place on the 23rd of December. Jharkhand Chief Electoral Officer Vinay Kumar Chaube said that 71.17% voting was recorded. Mr Chaube said the figure is likely to increase after getting the final figure from the respective presiding officers. रांची विधानसभा में सबसे कम मतदान का प्रतिशत परिलक्षित हुआ उनचास दशमलव शून्य चार प्रतिशत और सबसे अधिक मतदान का जो टर्न आउट है वोटर का वो पांचवें चरण में रहा है आठ नाला जहां पे कि अठहत्तर दशमलव शून्य एक प्रतिशत है पांचवें चरण के कुल सोलह विधानसभा क्षेत्रों में औसत मतदान इकहत्तर दशमलव एक सात प्रतिशत रहा है AIR correspondent reports that a large number of people exercise their right of franchise fearlessly in the five Naxal affected constituencies of Borio, Barhat, Litipara, Maheshpur and Sikaripara. A report. During today's poll, rural voters have exercised their right to franchise in large numbers than the urban voters. Women voters have outnumbered male voters in almost all polling booths of 16 constituencies. 93% divyang voters have also exercised their votes. Maximum 78% voting was recorded in Nala constituencies followed by 76% in Sarat and Pakur. 75% voting was in Maheshpur and Jamtara constituencies. Political fortune of 236 candidates including 29 women have been sealed in EVMs. Prominent among them are Jharkhand ministers Louis Marandi and Ranveer Singh, JMM leader Hemant Soren, Congress leader Alamgir Alam and Pradeep Yadav of Jharkhand Vikas Morcha. With KK Lal's report from Rachi, Renu Kataria, AIR News. Home Ministry today clarified that no Indian citizen will be unduly harassed and put to inconvenience 
by asking to prove citizenship by showing documents like birth certificates of parents or grandparents dating back to a period before 1971. In a series of tweets, a ministry spokesperson said illiterate citizens not having any documents will be allowed to produce witnesses or local proof supported by members of the community. The spokesperson said citizenship of India may be proved by giving any document relating to date of birth or place of birth or both. The list is likely to include a lot of common documents. A well laid out procedure in this regard will be issued by the Home Ministry. The clarification came a week after the Citizenship Amendment Act was passed by the Parliament and assented by the President. The Assam government will hold dialogue with the leadership of the protesting organizations. Talking to media in Guwahati this morning, Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonawal said all issues could be resolved through dialogue and the process of sending invitation to the leaders has been initiated by the Chief Secretary. The Chief Minister firmly said that the Assam will always remain for the Assamese and the rights of the indigenous people would not be heard by the amended Citizenship Act. Mr. Sonawal said he is fully committed to protect the interests of the people of the state. Assam will always remain with Assam. And for this, whatever registration is required, we will all like, uh, bring all the legislation. The Honorable Prime Minister, Narendra Modi ji, and Honorable Home Minister Amit Shah ji have already assured to the people of Assam that all the measures will be taken to get the Clause 6 of Assam Accord implemented with letter and respect. Meanwhile, mobile internet services has been restored in the state this morning, which was shut down on the 11th of this month. Delhi police detained several persons in connection with a violent protest in Old Delhi area today. Delhi police spokesperson M.S. Randhawa told that outsiders were involved in the violence and police in investigating the matter to nab the miscreants. He said the police only used mild force and water cannon to disperse the crowd. He denied any lati charge and use of tear gas. Mr. Randhawa said many of Delhi police personnel, including the Joint Commissioner of Police, got injured. Criticizing the India government over the Citizenship Amendment Act, Congress President Sonia Gandhi today said that people have the right to raise their voice against wrong decisions and policies of the government. In a video message, she alleged that the centre is showing disregard to the people's voice. Information and Broadcasting Ministry today issued an advisory asking TV channels to refrain from broadcasting content which is likely to instigate violence and promotes anti-national attitudes. Citing its earlier advisory, the Minister said it is observed that notwithstanding with the advisory, some TV channels are telecasting content which does not appear to be in the spirit of the program codes. It asked TV channels not to show the content that contains anything which may affect the integrity of the nation, maligns or slanders any individual in person or certain groups, segments of social public and moral life of the country. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. In Rajasthan, a special court today sentenced death penalty to four convicts for the 2008 Jaipur serial bomb blast that had left 80 dead and over 180 injured. On Wednesday, the court had convicted Muhammad Saif, Muhammad Sarwar Azmi, Muhammad Salman and Saifur Rahman under various sections of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, UAPA. Another accused, Shahbaz Hussain, was acquitted with the court giving him the benefit of the doubt. Apart from these five, two accused were killed in the Butler House encounter in Delhi in the same year and five others are still absconding. It was the evening of 13th May 2008. The wild city area of the city was as usual bustling with activity. Some were shopping while some were worshipping in the temple. But bomb blast at eight places one by one changed the scenario completely. The sound prayers and talks gave away to loud screams and cries. 80 innocent people lost their lives and 185 others were injured. Five accused were arrested out of 11. A special court convicted four and acquitted one accused on Wednesday. The judicial process may have taken a long time, but after the court's verdict, the victims of the blasts expressed happiness today. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. Expel BJP MLA Kuldeep Singh Sangar is sentenced to life imprisonment till the end of life by a Delhi court in Unnao rape and abduction case. The court ordered a compensation of 10 lakh rupees to the victim and imposed a fine of 25 lakh rupees on Sanger. The court in its order said it does not find any mitigating circumstance. It said Sanger was a public servant and he betrayed the faith of people. 
Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman today held the 8th pre-budget consultation meeting with the leading economists in New Delhi today in connection with the forthcoming General Budget 2020-21. The main areas of the discussions included steps needed to achieve 5 trillion dollar economy, job-oriented growth, transparency and fiscal arithmetic government's fiscal prudence and inflation targeting, among others. Finance Ministry in a statement said the economists were optimistic about the India's growth story and put forward ways through which the country can achieve the goal of 5 trillion economy. Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Ministry has finalized a plan for setting up 500 skill hubs and labs in government schools. It has taken several initiatives to impart skill training to the youth of the country. Our correspondent reports that the ministry aims to skill on a large scale with high standards in order to achieve its vision of a skilled India. Skills and knowledge are the driving force of economic growth and social development for the country. Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship was formed in 2014 to give a flip to the skill development and entrepreneurship efforts in the country. More than 1 crore youth are being imparted skill training annually under National Skill Development Mission. The total number of industrial training centers increased by 12% from around 12,000 in 2014 to nearly 15,000 in 2018-19 with Dipendra Kumar Bhupendra Singh AIR News Delhi Railway Minister Piyush Goel today said that railways is looking at 50 lakh crore rupees investment over the next 12 years speaking in New Delhi he said it is coming out of joint ventures so that it can modernize the railways bring down the logistics cost and improve the share of freight in railway network and make the journey world class Mr. Goel, who also holds the charge of Commerce Ministry, said government is making huge efforts to give support to bankers to lend boldly and freely to the NBFC sector and the real estate sector. As part of the series of flight trials of Pinaka missile system, two test firings have been conducted by the Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO. The first trial was conducted yesterday, wherein one missile was fired at 75 km range. The second trial was successfully conducted this morning from the integrated test range Chandipur of the Odisha coast. The mission objective of today's trial was to test low-range functioning of live warhead along with its proximity initiation and salvo launch. Two Pinaka missiles were launched in salvo mode with 60 seconds interval between the two firings. India and China will hold their border talks in New Delhi tomorrow. This will be the 22nd meeting of the special representatives of both the countries to discuss the boundary question. A release from Ministry of External Affairs said that the Indian delegation will be led by National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, while the Chinese side will be led by the State Councillor and Foreign Minister of People's Republic of China, Wang Yi. This will be the first meeting of the special representatives between the two countries since the second informal summit between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping in Mamalapuram in October this year. Former world champion weightlifter Shaikom Mirabai Chanu won the women's 49kg category gold medal to open India's account at the 6th Qatar International Cup in Doha today. The 24-year-old Manipuri lifted 83kg in snatch and 111kg in clean and jerk to finish on top of the podium. However, it was a performance way below her personal best of 201 kg. An earthquake of 6.3 magnitude was felt in several parts of North India, including Delhi and NCR, this evening. The epicenter of the tremor was Hindukush in Afghanistan. However, there is no report of any casualty or damage to property so far. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. India aspiring for a $5 trillion economy backed by reforms, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Over 71% polling in the fifth and the final phase of Jharkhand Assembly elections. Assam government to hold dialogue with organizations protesting on citizenship issue. Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonawal says rights of indigenous Assamese would not be heard by the CAA. That penalty awarded to four convicts in Jaipur blasts that had killed 80 people. Ona rape convict Kuldeep Singh Sanger condemned to jail for whole life also to pay 25 lakh rupees fine. And in weightlifting, Sai Khom Mirabai Chanu lifts the gold in women's 49 kg category at Qatar International Cup. For details of this story and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And that is all in the news at 9. Good night.